Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about making standard sample libraries in Logic Pro sound good. Okay, so there are sort of there's many things you can do, but I'm just going to start with seven things today. <clears throat> and it's going to be I want to talk about strings today, but this applies to most uh, to any instrument, sorry, in the orchestra, the woodwind family, the brass family, but today we're just going to talk about the strings family. So, all right, number 1, let's get straight to it. Number 1 is choose individual string patches not the multi string patches because they sound even less realistic than the single ones what i mean by that is when you go here let me just show you if you go to create a new track new software instrument it'll bring you here you go across here uh, orchestral <clears throat> strings and you can pick you know it's the same for brass they have i mean they have full brass like that, so it's the kind of sim similar sort of scenario. Um, you've got cinema strings, full strings, modern strings, pop strings, romance strings, session strings, smart strings, string ensemble, studio strings. Don't use any of them. What we're focused on <coughs> is doing them individually. So we've got basses, cellos, violas, violin, violin ones, violins one and violins two. You can see I've already got this. Let me just delete this. I don't need this anymore. Let me just show you. You know, I've got this all here. Um, and I showed you in the previous video how to get the different um, articulations, so normal, legato, staccato, pizzicato. So if you have, if you didn't see that, make sure you check that out in a previous video, because you can do you can access it all from here. That's all all my different possibilities for violins two, then violins one are all here, and so on. Same thing for cello and um, uh, double bass. So I'm going to show you how to go from sounding like this to this. So it sounds better, sort of. I mean. You know, you could do more. Let me just that bit went over. Uh, so yeah, you can. I mean, there's there's not much you can really. You can make standard sample libraries sound good, but they they go as it, it can go so far, and then you can't get much better. So the reason why is that they're just they're very cheap sample samples. These ones they're not very well done a lot of them, but you know, starting out it completely. It does it like that's what I've been using starting out. Like that's you know you don't need anything expensive to start out, especially if you're just starting out learning the stuff. Then use this. You don't need the expensive stuff yet. So that's number one. Play individual tracks in. You know, like sorry, use individual tracks rather than these like romance strings, which will have all of the bass, cello, uh, violas, and both violins. You just it, but it won't sound as good. So this way, you can do it individually. You can pan them differently. You know, you can you can edit each individual one. It's just, it's much better. Uh, you can change volume as well, that kind of thing. So yeah. And then number two is play the tracks in live. So like I did in a previous video, I showed you I was playing this in. So I would definitely recommend playing it in rather than drawing it in. But if you need to draw it in, at least go in, you know, select the notes and do MIDI transform, humanize, and then you would click operate only because you've already selected which ones you need. You can edit these a bit if you want, that's like how, how much by, with the velocity, sorry, how many velocity notes you want to go up or down by and the positioning of left or right, whatever. Um, so you can see I, I played it in and you can see I don't start perfectly on time, which is perfect because <laughs> No, no player can be perfect timing wise absolutely on the dot so it just sounds more realistic okay so that's number two number three uh, sorry no sorry just quickly before we move on <clears throat> with number two um, playing in the strings I would I would draw it in if you've got anything complex rhythmically you know so if you've got some complex drum patterns or if you've got some staccato strings that are very hard to play so for example I'm just going to do this on this little keyboard so if you add some that. If you, you know, like that, that was quite sloppy, but um, if you find that hard to do, 
that anything like fast like that just draw it in and then maybe humanize it a little bit that kind of thing um, or if you've got some then you wouldn't really play that kind of thing but you know you know what I mean it's if you've got something that's ridiculous to play uh, especially like if you've got a MIDI keyboard or just your uh, key your your um, keyboard on your laptop your MacBook um, then yeah definitely draw it in and humanize it from there Okay, number three is volume automation. So what I mean by this, this is just flat. So let me solo it. That's without any reverb as well or any expression. We'll get into that in a bit, but you'll notice the difference between these two in terms of just the volume automation. I mean, you know, you'll hear that it gets louder okay um yeah just you know no real player is gonna play just at the same volume throughout, you know, just playing like this, same volume. They're gonna, they're gonna move around. They're gonna, so you can automate that. You can do it by hand, you know, clicking like this and going, okay, I want it like this. So if you, um, sorry, so before you go to volume, uh, do that. If you don't know, you click here to get automation opened up. The automation tab. You make sure you've got volume, main volume, volume selected, and then you can just mess around with it like this, and you'll hear the different volume so let me just show you that you know just play around with it I mean realistically don't start like this um, they will they will typically players will typically start quieter like this and move up especially as it builds with intensity Yeah, so you can see already with the volume automation, it sounds better, and that's how easy it is to do volume automation. You can, you know, do it by hand. I mean, if you have a keyboard, you can map it in and actually do it on the mod wheel or the dials that you move up and down. So, but for now, just getting started, you can do it by hand like that. I've done that for a long time, you know, when I was getting started, I just did it all by hand. Um, and again, we could do this for the other, you know, the two channels that play in the chords, but just for the purpose of saving time, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to bore you with this. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to have it like this. Then, actually, let's just put these up a bit because they're a little bit, bit quiet. Yeah, so from here, the, that, that was number three, volume automation. From here, we can also do expression automation, all right? So you go into here, and it's basically how expressive you want the player to be, able to put it in simple forms, you know? It's, it's, you're limited with what you, with what you can do with Logic's sample libraries, but if you use other professional sample libraries and you use something like Contact to load the sample libraries through, you can do so much with the sample libraries, uh, sorry, with with automation, this kind of stuff. So, you know, expression, all that. So don't, don't worry about it for now, though. You're just getting started. You don't need that kind of stuff now. You just need to practice what you do. But yeah, this is just to get it sound a bit better. So you can go into here. Make sure if you've not got it turned on, click this button. And here you've got note velocity at the moment. So that's how hard they're playing it. So you can go to expression. Um, another one you can do is modulation as well. You can do some different stuff. You've got a uh, volume there as well. So expression, we go in here. So this is how it just sounds flat. Okay, 
so we're gonna go here and change up this a little bit start lower again and go up as they crescendo into these higher points okay so let's just do this nice and quick so again you'll hear the difference Sounds better, doesn't it? Okay, so that's the basics of expression automation. And like I said, you can do modulation as well and some other things. So another thing, um, number five is panning. What are we on? Oh, sorry. Uh, number five is panning. So you can, you know, obviously pan. If you were doing like full strings, you could do the cellos and bass to one side, and then violins and violas to the other side. Yeah. But if you're doing like a full orchestra, you can change that up and have like all the brass to one side, all the strings to one side, all the woodwinds maybe in the middle or spread out as well, all the percussion in center or whatever. I mean, it that there's there's standard ways of, or, of arranging like the orchestra where they are like panned where they would be in the room, but things are changing with especially for writing for film, sorry, for trailer music and game music. It's different. It's not they don't always have a live orchestra recorded for it. For film, of course, they do. But for, you know, for a lot of trailer music and a lot of game music, it can be composed by someone in, you know, like a digital audio workstation like this in Logic. They'll just have better quality samples. So again, it's and you know they're not all necessarily using the whole orchestra. So don't worry too much about it. But just bear in mind, just don't have everything in the middle. You want it nicely panned out. So I tend to I tend to have the melodies in the center, unless you've got a melody and a strong counter melody. But I usually do melody in the center, and then anything playing chords like the cellos, and I would have violas with it as well, and bass. I would have the bass in the middle, then cellos maybe panned to one side, violas to another and violins even further left or something like that, then brass again differently, you know, it's just play around with it, listen to other tracks that you like and s just listen out to where things are panned, you know, you'll notice that not everything is in the center. So it's just pan, you just go here, that's, you're gonna, I'll just show you this, you'll hear it's panning to the left, all in the left speaker, now all in the right. Yeah, that kind of thing, okay? So, um, let's move on to number six, which is reverb. So, I've turned the reverb off for this. Let me just get rid of these. So, reverb just makes it sound more real, of course, yeah? So, the easy way of doing reverb is going in here. Space Designer, always use Space Designer. You can get better results. Um, so, you know, you could do this and you have, cool, you have reverb. Okay. Over the top reverb. <laughs> Great, but you can't control it as well, so let's get rid of that plugin. So what I would recommend is clicking here and doing it through a bus channel, okay? So you've already got these two channels which will come with these automatically, but if you want to create your own, you go in here and choose one that's not used. So any one of these, the ones that have these arrows and the names there are already being used. So let's go bus four, like so. It'll open it up here. So let me just show you. If you go into your mixer, so you press X, that's the shortcut to the mixer. You can see that. Let's just get this up a bit. In the end part of your mixer here, you'll have there's the there's the two that come with the strings automatically, bus one and two. But you've now clicked on bus four, which is here. Plus four, okay, so let's just type, you know, just for example now, let's just type, title this new verb, new verb, verb short for reverb, you know, that kind of thing. So you can either select the reverb in here, but I would just recommend, you know, you can do it here, but uh, whatever. So let's just do it here. Reverb, sorry, just, yeah, you can do it here because the bus four has, if you click bus four, it will come up here as well, and you can click it in here, but you'll see as I add it in here, it will also add there. So let's go in here, reverb, again, space designer, stereo, okay? And you can see it's here. Now, I'm going to just pick something, medium spaces, I 
in those spaces or I guess I'll <laughs> yeah there was one for string somewhere I can't remember where it was ooh let's just do runes yeah this is the one I think string chamber let's do that for now so at the moment uh, let me just show you something with, the, with reverb so I'll do that in a sec. So let's just put this up here halfway now and then we'll change it how it sounds. So basically, you've now created that reverb in your bus there. So let's just put this on a loop playing this cello track. You, you click play. Nothing's coming through yet, but you've got the bus selected here. So what you're going to do is basically just move this up and you'll hear reverb coming through. Yeah, so that that's just already sounds better but the, with the reverb. But the reason you do it like this through the bus is so that you can actually, you can control how much of that effect is coming through because if you just had the bus, sorry, the reverb here, um, in here, if you just went here and did it like this, you could do this all the way up like this and just be like, yes, I want it massive, but you, and you would, you would have it like this. you can control how much is coming through and go until it sounds good so that's ridiculous but you know you can see so you see what I mean that's the benefits of using buses so I'm just gonna get rid of this for now because I don't I don't really need it uh, because I'm just just for the purposes of this uh, I'm just gonna use the standard ones that come with this patch. So bus one, small room, bus two, large hall. So it tells you what they are. Uh, I'm just going to turn these up a bit like this. So you can hear like that. Sounds like it's in a room. Got a bit of the hall there. Yeah, that'll sound fine like that. So this is it before. And now with the reverb. Sounds much better, yeah? And the last point I wanted to cover, number seven, is vibrato. So, weird thing with these logic samples is you can't really control it very well. So, you know, you saw me changing the velocity earlier. So here, you can do anything with the velocity, you know, going up or down, how, how quiet it is, whatever, how soft they play it. And it'll stay that way they stay quite soft without any vibrato until you get to about 109 and then when you get to 110 109 it changes, that's right 109 still without vibrato and now suddenly we have vibrato better than if we had it like this. Unless of course you want it soft, but I'm just telling you how you can get vibrato. I just personally think it sounds much better with it. So these are the seven things we've covered. So number one, choose the patches individually, you know, do them like this, bass, cello, da 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 whatever. And in the, the standard composer template that you're gonna get with this course it'll be in one of the future videos so look out for the download you'll be able to actually just have this set out for you you don't need to select I've already selected it for you so yeah number one is just choose indiv individual string patches not the multiple ones they're ridiculous um, but yeah this goes for anything if you're using um, sorry uh, brass or woodwinds you know whatever um, yeah so then number two is play tracks in live rather than drawing the notes in if you need to draw them in, like you can't play a keyboard or it's a part that's too complicated to play in for yourself on a keyboard, then draw it in, then humanize it or move the notes around yourself slightly. Then number three, 
is volume automation, okay? Number four is expression automation. Number five is panning. Don't worry about it too much though, just make sure things that everything's not in the middle, nice and spread out. Number six is reverb, and number seven is vibrato, okay? So they're just some basic things to get you started with making standard sample libraries sound way better, okay? Just like, you know, going that extra mile, you know, you don't need to do this straight away, you can write your whole piece, your three, three minute, eight minute, whatever you're doing. If you're doing something, you know, for trailers, which is why I, I do more, if you're doing just trailer music, then maybe write it and then do the, this sort of the final touches later on. I mean, I, I like to do it as I go um, with the trailer stuff, but if you want to do it at the end, that's fine. You can do that as well. You know, work with what you with what, do whatever works for you, basically. Okay. So I hope you guys got some value from this. Let me know if you have any questions about this or any of the other lessons. Um, you know, make sure you're in the mastermind and asking any questions that you need answering and I will see you in the next video.